Hi all, I'm Clem Ullman here. Our website is www.cwowi.eu. Welcome to this teaching about um, the authority of the believer, about your and my authority that we have in Christ. This is actually part 13. Last week and the week before we started talking about the armor of God. You can find it if you have your Bible there in Ephesians 6. And actually it's a good idea. Right now I'll have my Bible here with me. And it says twice, and I want to emphasize it today, where it says, put on the whole armor of God, verse 11. In verse 13, it says again, take up the whole armor of God. What is the armor? Just to bring that in your remembrance, the armor is not something that you wear on physically, but those are spiritual truths that we need to know. And why do we need to wear the whole armor? Why do we need to know all of those truths that Paul is talking about? Verse 11 mentions us, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If we do not know all those truths that Paul is talking about, we will not be able to stand against all the wiles and the tricks and the methods of the devil because he's attacking our minds as I explained you um, um, some time ago. So last couple of weeks we talked about, uh, where did we talk about? Well, we talked about the girdle of truth. Actually, let's go there in verse 14. It says, stand therefore, or place yourself, or prepare yourself, having girded your waist with truth. That was what we talked about first. So the girdle or the belt of truth is the word of God. It holds everything together. It was the less notable, but the most important piece of the armor of God. Then it says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and I'm not going into deep into a detail about righteousness because I have done a whole teaching about our uh, righteousness in Christ. So you can find it on the internet, on Facebook, and also on YouTube. But st righteousness means standing in a right relationship with God, that you know that you are forgiven, that you are the righteous in Christ, that it is his righteousness that is in your spirit, that you are a new creation. And it says here, putting on the breastplate. Why does Paul uh, compare righteousness with a breastplate? Well, the breastplate, it protected all the vital uh, organs. So you can imagine when a soldier was not wearing his breastplate, he was an easy target for the enemy and he would be dead very soon after the battle. And also what is interesting, when Paul is talking about those Roman soldiers, the breastplate was made of copper and bronze. And you can imagine when the sun would reflect on the breastplate, it would like it would be like like fire almost. It would be very bright, and it could almost blind actually the eyes of the enemy. So that is very important too. You have to think about it. Okay, it says putting on the breastplate of righteousness, having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's where I talked about last week about peace of God. And then above all, not that it's the most important, but it means next, what you have to do next, taking the shield of faith, which will you be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. I will, um, I will end with this one because it needs more explanation. Then it says, take the helmet of salvation. Why is salvation? What is salvation? Salvation is, of course, that we are saved that our sins are forgiven, that we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus, what he did for us, but salvation is more. Salvation, and you, when you look up that word, the word sozo, it means you are healed, you are delivered, you are rescued, you are actually whole, there is peace in your life, there's preservation, there's protection. That is all part of that word sozo, meaning saved. And he compares that being saved, what Jesus did on the cross and on his burial and resurrection for us, he compares it to a helmet. Why is that? Well, the Roman helmet completely covered the head of the, of the soldier and even in the back. And it was very tight. And when the enemy came with a, sh uh, um, um, a short axe, you know, trying to cut off his head, he would not su succeed if the uh, soldier was wearing his helmet. So it means, you know, if he wants to attack you, if he wants to attack your mind, but you know the truth, you know what Jesus did on the cross for you, you know that not just mental, but it has become a part of you, it will function in your life as a helmet and the devil cannot attack you and he cannot do you any harm. Then it says, um, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, we talked about it some weeks ago. The sword of the spirit is actually the only uh, offensive weapon. That is the sword of the spirit. That is that rhema word, the word that God speaks to you that you can use against the enemy. All the other 
parts of the armor are defensive. And I want to go with together with you to the shield of faith. It says above all, taking the shield of faith, uh, with which you will be able to quench all the, vi the fiery darts of the wicked one. What is the shield of faith? He says, take it up or pick it up is actually what it says, because you can lay it down. But you have to, in battle, you have to pick it up, the shield of faith. What is faith? Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And now you think, okay, hearing comes when I read the word of God. And the more I read the word, the more faith I will have. No, then you are mistaken. Because the word, word here in Romans 10, 17 is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema word of God. So when you have that revelation, that rhema word, that word that God speaks to you, that it, it gives faith, that it's like a shield of faith and when paul is talking about the shield of the roman um a, a roman soldier that was a shield that was very wide very long it had a shape of a door and it completely covered the the soldier so it means there was no place for the enemy to be able to attack him but of course the enemy would still try to do that and but the shield it was made of six at least six thin layers of um of leather and they were woven tightly together it was very strong it was very durable it was even stronger than steel but the soldier had to do one thing to keep it in that good condition because you know leather it can wear out when you use it and and eventually when you do nothing with the leather it can crack and when your shield is not working you are an easy target for the enemy so what those soldiers did every morning they took a vial or a small bottle of oil and they, uh, they, they cut a cloth and they uh, put uh, oil on the cloth and then they start rubbing oil on their shield. And they, 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 they did it actually every day. And what, you know that oil is a picture of the Holy Spirit, meaning your faith, uh, the word that God speaks to you, but also faith that you get from, from reading the locals word of God. You also need that anointing, you need that... Uh, yeah, that anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Actually, daily, you need to communicate with him daily to keep your faith uh, in good condition. So when the enemy attacks, it will not, it is not able to do anything. Then it says, so that you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. What are those the fiery uh, darts? I have something written about it. Where is it? Where is it? Oh yeah, the, the word quench means to extinguish by drowning in water. So before the Roman soldier went out to battle, he purposely soaked his shield in water until his shield was completely water saturated. Why? Because the enemy was shooting fire uh, bearing arrows in his direction. If a shield was dry, it was possible for it to be set on fire when it was struck. But when that shield was soaked in water, the flames would be, as, uh, would be extinguished, even if an arrow could penetrate it. So how does that apply to us? You know, the water is also a um, Ephesians 6, 5, 26 talks about the word of God is also likened to water. So hearing from God is like that water. You know, the rhema word of God is like that water that will keep your faith in a good condition. And when the enemy tries to fire his, uh, to shoot his fiery darts, uh, he, it will be, uh, um, how do you say it, uh, <laughs> my English is gone, it will be this extinguished, that's the right word. So, those fiery darks, they refer to arrows, they had a tip wrapped in a cloth, and then they soaked it in flammable fluid, so it would burn with hot flames, and that's what the enemy does, you know, when he shoots at you, it's like... Though those, it, uh, it's like an explosion of, of, of anger or an explosion of fear or worry. So, and he shoots it off you. But when you have that shield of faith, when you know what the Lord spoke to you, when you have uh, that faith saturated in water, the word of God and uh, the Holy Spirit, also oil, you know, the oil of the Holy Spirit, it, will be, it can uh, completely protect you. That's what Paul is talking about here. So now we've covered the whole um, spiritual armor of God. So take up that armor, it means you have to do something about it, you have to take up that shield of faith. Uh, it's your responsibility to put on all those, all those pieces of armor, it's not literary of course, but you have to know all those truths that Paul is talking about. Because we are in a spiritual battle, it's not that we have to fight the devil again, no, but we have to preserve what we have, you know, we have to preserve our freedom. Um, what would that someone 
okay that's it actually i think my time is up and the next coming uh, the next two weeks i will not be online because we have a lot of family over here and we have to run back and forth to the airport but uh, in the new year in 2019 i will be there and probably with another and a new subject so have a very blessed and a merry christmas see you next year bye